Okay, so let's begin. Um, so let's, uh, yeah, let's start with this. Um, this is a male face, and this is a male face drawn by per someone who's taking on the 14-day challenge. I congratulate you on completing 11 days thus far. I am very proud of you. That's not easy. I don't even draw 11 days in a row. Um, not that even mean means anything. I just mean I don't draw 11 days in a row and I'm a teacher. Um, it's because it's hard uh, using that muscle every single day of the week or every single day for 11 days in a row. Um, it's it's difficult. It challenges your, you know, it gets you into this weird twilight zone, like the thousand mile stare or whatever it's called, um, after someone's been like in battle for four days. It, that's what you're going to feel like. You're going to feel strained. You're going to feel like everything you ever knew was just flown out the door. You're repeating the same mistakes you made for the last 10 days, and you're like, holy crap, I am actually staring on the cutting edge of my skill. I am actually looking at my limit. I see a wall ahead of me, and I don't know any more than this wall. That's what the 14-day challenge is all about. That's what it does to you. It puts you in that thousand-mile stare. It does, that, it does that thing to you where you question your very soul. <laughs> it makes you question your, 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 your role in life. Um, the reason why that's important in your development is because it cancels out your visual, uh, your tunnel vision. It makes you see, first of all, how little you know, how much you depend on your habits, and how much you depend on the stuff or symbols that you've managed to memorize somehow these past, um, you know, years in your skill. How much you've uh, the, the scraps that you go for in your visual library that you hope will will help you create a good read. Um, that's what the visual library does for you, and. I mean, the 14 day challenge, that's for your visual library. Um, getting a critique is the most important thing. So that's what I'm going to be doing here today. I'm going to be giving you a critique. I don't want to see the rest of your images look like this. This is a beautiful man we're looking at here, but he's got a couple of cartoony influences here that are taking away from the um, legitimacy, is not even the right word, validity. Is, I don't know what the word is, from the integrity, sculptural, structural integrity of his male anatomy, let's just go with that. The, the, the size of his eyes, the, the disproportionateness, the d lack of focus in the light source is taking away from the, bear with me, structural integrity of his, of his male face, of the male in his face. Meaning that this eye size is working more as a cartoony, um, uh, sort of like an encore to the cartoony than, than anything else. So that's what we want to do. We want to cancel out the, the size of the eyes, first and foremost. So I'm going to get on liquify, and I'm going to shrink his eyes, and you will see what a hunk he instantly becomes. I've got to resize them, but resize them on a smaller brush so that the spherical comes back out. Oopsie. Damn, time pressure. Remember, it's all about the ogre and the elf. So when we're talking ogre, uh, we want to inverse what the elf symbol is. The elf symbol is a triangle that's upside down. So we want to bring these closer together. This this ensures a male face. Nice job on keeping the eyebrows without a, an, an eyebrow arch. That really gives a female look, having that extra space under the eyebrow hair, um, where the eyebrow arch is prominent in the female face. That's very, very dangerous um, uh, for drawing a male face that you want to look like a badass, you know? This guy's such a hunk. Damn. <laughs> um, so what we're going to do, I'm just trying to balance the nose and the lips. When the eyes were very big, it made the other features large as well. That's what happens. Sometimes you make a mistake, and once you fix that mistake, you're like, holy shit, there's a whole chain of mistakes that has been hiding behind these big eyes. These big eyes have been... Uh, balancing the sizes together, scale-wise, it's been pretty symmetrical, but the eyes themselves are bad, so there weren't a good gauge for how to measure the, 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 the features, essentially. So when you fix one thing, uh, you notice a hundred other things wrong, and as long as you keep that, that, that cascade of, 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 of issues constantly being fixed, you will eventually reach the point where the image is finished and complete and perfect. So I just want to make it seem like he's looking at something, and the way to do that, the way to make it feel like there's a gaze, is to cross the eyes. Look at him. Ain't he a hunk, guys? Let's take a look at Ellen's Mate painting. <laughs> you know there's going to be lots of talk about that, that tower that you built, eh, Ellen? <clears throat> I'm already seeing it happen. Today's the, today, that's today's theme. 
that video that I made earlier. Yeah, it's just it's all about the the mail today. <laughs> um, uh, okay, so I'm doing this. Yeah, yeah, Gemdas, I know what you're saying. Pushing this down. I don't want to see too much of the nostril because he's not looking up. Listen to this, guys, and I want everyone to repeat this. Hi, hi, um, oh wait, I didn't welcome you guys. One second, I will. Um, uh, hi, Shauna. Uh, I, got, I want you guys to repeat this once I say it, okay? Everybody ready? If you don't see the bottom of the chin, you don't see the bottom of the nose. What does that mean? If you don't see the bit of the chin right here that looks down, not the chin itself, but the bit under the chin, that side bit that you see only when you look the face from the side, that little bit right here, you don't see the bottom of the nose. All right, because that's the that's the bottom of the cube we're talking about. And the cube, as long as there's tiny pieces of tiny cubes attaching on this cube, then you guys will um, have a consistent perspective happening through all the cubes. What does that mean? Give us a diagram, because we're visual thinkers and you're talking out of your ass. Okay, this is what I mean. There is the head, and that's the cube of the head, right? And that's the chin. I mean, that's the neck. When we look at this from the side, we see this. This is the neck, and this is the chin. If you have another object, which is the nose, and the bottom of it is visible, it means this is visible, because these two are hinged, not hinged, attached. They're, they're, they're stuck together. So whatever happens to this, happens to this. This perspective is shared, because this is the horizon line for this particular object, and we are the ones looking at it. Or we are the ones looking at it, like, right here. And this is Mr. Sexy. And if we don't see the bottom of his nose, we don't see the bottom of his chin, because of perspective. And this is something that I, this is something, a teaching tool, I don't know who sent it in which class, and probably in the Skype group, but this is a beautiful summary, eloquent, better than I could ever say it. <clears throat> These help you understand these. These perspective grids, these perspective, um, uh, you know, the, the, yeah, perspective grids and the cubes, they all help you understand a face better. They are not disconnected. They are not unfamiliar with each other. They are very much connected because if you break down the organic patterns, the, 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 the curved patterns of anything organic down to something geometric, it'll be much easier for you to, to, to preserve the third dimension in that object. That's a lot, that sounds like a lot, bunch of mumbo jumbo, but, um, but it really does, it really does make a difference. So spend some time just drawing cubes. It's not going to hurt you. Um, it's going to, in fact, enhance the way you think about form. It's going to change the very choices you make with your brush. Those are the choices that it's going to make. Uh, it's, those are the, that's the influence it's going to make. Sorry, I'm all over the place. So um, we, were st we were looking at the bottom of his nose. So I'm going to, before and after here, real quick, and I want you guys to see the difference. Before, after. <clears throat> you are the one, the one that lies close to me. <laughs> Y'all are weird. Um, okay, welcome Wilhelm, Sarah, Chris, Saul, hi Saul, Sacronosia, Pox, and Priscilla, Bear, Panda, Nurolo, Mute, Muffin, Mr. Ken, Mimi, Lyle, Doucette, hi Lyle, uh, Jack, Flix, Executable Nugget, <laughs> Ellen Payne, a Cadling, um, Dr. Gemdis, Decoy Octopus, Cyanide Poisoning, uh, Cafe EY Tinta, Brian Das, Black Oreo Cookie, Bear Armadillo, Bass, bass Animation, Hi Shauna, um, Asma, Arper, Aurelia, Acru. Welcome everyone. That is like from Powerpuff to Human. Have you ever seen that Lady Gaga eye thing that she does? That's pretty much what happened here. We're kind of getting some of that. God, I'm so happy she's dead in the dust. <laughs> but uh, but that's that's the only thing that that's the equivalent of it in real life is what I'm trying to say. And even that is not something that is familiar to us. It's always uncanny because it's not a familiar proportion. Unfamiliar proportions are automatically uncanny. Everyone, write that back to me, including you, Lyle. <laughs> You're not exempt from this. 
Stop leaning on your chair and write something down in class. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure she's fine. I'm sure she's a nice person. I'm just, I, I personally never liked her work. It was random for random's sake. There was no real vision behind it. Or something that I noticed. I mean, maybe I'm being a pompous ass. I, I'm usually a very pompous ass. I'm sorry, Shauna, <laughs> that I don't like Yaga. Um, unfamiliar proportions are uncanny. Um, are automatically uncanny, yes. Uh, because if we don't see what we see in real life um, right away, it will bother us. His eyes right now are not small. They're actually pretty average. It's his nose that's a bit wide and his mouth that's a bit bulky. But he still looks like the hottest basketball, I mean, football player you've ever seen, right? He's still very handsome. And that's because we've managed to keep the symmetry. We kept the square of his head. We kept all the masculine symbolizers in, in place. A beautiful chin. Nice job on making the eye, the, 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 lip, width, uh, the lip width pretty wide. The nose is, is the large size as we want with the ogre. So it's the inversion. This is the elf, where the eyes are big. And this is the ogre, where the eyes are smaller. Nose and then mouth. I have a video on this explaining that you don't have to go all the way ogre, you don't have to go full retard in order to get a male. Sometimes you guys just have, I'm sorry, sometimes you guys um, just have to do a little bit of a, of a degree or, or a hint at the male ogre, at the, at the ogre symbol, and uh, still have a male as long as you keep the eyebrows thick, keep them away from the arch, like if you give him these eyebrows, he's going to look like a tr tranny. Um, if you, uh, if you, I don't know, make his lips too dark, and he'll look like a, f a female. But as long as you, if, if he does look like a pretty a pretty boy, there are still pretty boys, men who are men, who have normal level testosterone levels, um, that just have feminine features or very delicate features. And that's fine because you can get away with it. As long as you are hinting toward the ogre, you will still get a masculine character. Let me load this um, Mate painting here. Okay. Unfamiliar portions are usually uncanny. Good job, Lyle. <laughs> you think just because I'm done with you that you're immune? <laughs> You'll never escape me. Let's see what everyone's saying. What about eye line and the ears? Um, yeah, th that, those are completely off. I'll look at those in a second. Basketball racist. <laughs> I don't know. He doesn't look like a, an African. Why would I be racist? He looks like a... It looks like that white uh, football player from Remember the Titans, actually. Um, and I can never find those ones. Really? You can't you can't find the ogre and the elf? For reals? Elf. Um, they're here. Form study lesson on ogre and the elf. It's right here. This is where I bring in that really creepy ass picture. <laughs> Don't you guys remember? You forgetful people. It's right here, Shauna. It's at the end. <clears throat> yes, she posts on the tube. Yeah, Ellen, you can rewatch these videos. Of course you can. I post them on YouTube. I used to not do that. There was a whole year of me giving out lessons that I didn't record anywhere. Does that suck? I miss them all. I did some some really solid lessons then. All right, let's talk about the ears. Um, for the ears, ears generally hover between the eye of the the line of the eyeballs and the nose. And here's a little tip: if you want him to look like a brute, give him smaller ears. It makes his head seem bigger. Um, like not bigger, like more uh, bulky. Not bigger like Poindexter big, bigger like bulky. If you want a quick tip on how to draw ears, here it is. <clears throat> it's like a more of a line efficient painterly kind of thing, but you basically get the, the core shade of the area depending on where the light source is coming from. So this ear is going to be lighter than this ear which needs to be dark. And then you get the light shade, draw the most prevalent altitudes of the ear. And usually it's just those three lines. Top bit, that little bit that you push down to cover your ears because your friend's singing in the washroom. And then this one. 
Shut up, Katie. You're not Taylor Swift. Katie, shut up. That's what people used to do to me. <laughs> I used to sing my heart out in the washroom. My siblings used to hate me for it. Why am I making fun of myself? Alright, over here. Alright, be careful of the, I think they're called the trapezius muscles. Be careful of these laterals. No? Yeah, trapezius. Uh, because if you make them too bulky, he'll look like he has no neck. And now, let me show you something. It happens in real life. Um, Bodybuilder, <laughs> no neck. And um, it happens, alright? We, we see it happen. But it, it doesn't happen naturally, and he really has to, like, do that in order to get that look. This is just fucking morbid. This is, like, all levels of of uncanny. I think this is photoshopped. But you really do still have a neck and only if you're like crazy um, even this guy is fucking like he got like a, a tire tire pump. He just stuck it up his ass and it just started pumping. Um, yeah whatever I'm gonna stop joking around. Um, the neck is still there so just because you want to create a male character I know that there's a lot of slenderness to the female character length of neck is very very feminine um, that's something that I use a lot in my work when I want to stylize I stylize, I stylize the neck length on purpose uh, but it doesn't mean that your uh, the male feet form is exempt from the neck length um, entirely we still need to see some of that silhouette now everyone repeat after me the silhouette still needs to be human if you are missing a big part of the human structure of the structural integrity of the human you will not have something familiar. The the uh, the neck, the, the, the silhouette, this is what I want you guys to write back to me, the silhouette still needs to be a human silhouette. <coughs> Gem dislikes my literal and accurate Googles. <laughs> it's huge traps. Yeah. Um, always, It always looks like smaller man is coming out of their shoulders. <laughs> Too much names today. Memes, yeah. Dude look like a sack of bread. <laughs> Ain't it? Uh, that's shop too. Yeah, that was that one was shop. Um, lower comments. <clears throat> that's funny. Sack of bread is funny. The silhouette's gotta be human. The silhouette needs to look human. The black outline needs to be vaguely human. <laughs> Why did you add vaguely? Are you trying to just get away with? Um, silhouette needs to be human, the silhouette, 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 damn, can't spell that word. Silhouette. <clears throat> I always wonder what it feels like to be that big. Um, I used to work out at the gym, and guys like that used to complain about not being able to get on and do simple cardio, they get tired so fast, because they're so heavy at the top part of their body. Um, their lungs have, like, an extra difficult time dealing with the extensive cardio, because they want to get big, they don't want to burn too much, right? They avoid cardio altogether, and finally when they do it. For me, real fitness level is tested by your ability to outrun a Tyrannosaurus Rex. If you cannot run away from a Tyrannosaurus, if he's chasing you and get to the cave safely, um, then you are, you are screwed. <laughs> so no matter, you can't fight a Tyrannosaurus. You can't take him on into a lifting battle, and you guys get into a gym, and you guys like powder up your palms and, and challenge him to, to I can lift more than you. You gotta outrun it. <clears throat> That's the real test of strength. Um, <laughs> anyway, so I'm just fixing up. Since the light is coming out of here, we're gonna have a little bit of... Men have this, like, extra um, width to their jaws that is very visible when they bite down. And it's um, all entirely, really, in the hormonal levels or how men are built on the hormonal level and what bones develop more than the others. Women don't have this because we're too busy making babies. <laughs> Here come the Tumblr posts. Alright, that looks like it's done. A little bit on this side. And please do not forget the cast shadow. Throw this before anything. I don't care if you lost detail. I don't care if, if you're going to get grounded because you lost it. I don't care. You have to make sure that you cast this shadow. Figure it out after that. <laughs> 
You have to cast the shadow because it's a depression on the skeletal level. Repeat that after me. All humans are similar on the skeletal level. It means that no matter what you're drawing, male, female, old, young, they're going to have that shadow. Um, they're going to have that shadow. It's, it's, it's really imperative you guys remember the skeletal level as controlling the core shadows on the face because we are all human on the skeletal. We all look the same on the skeletal level. We're all clones of each other. Um, it's not like we have, you know, the, the skin deep, like they say. Um, <clears throat> I have a big head and little arms. <laughs> I love that scene. I love that beautiful little pterosaurus. Um, all humans are similar on the skeletal level. Yeah, skele generally speaking, Sarah Chris, no, no detail um, really necessary for this uh, lesson because it's, it's a matter of, you know, the males and females, um, Hispanics and Asians, they all have eye sockets? Yes, they do. <laughs> and it casts, it casts shadows. Maybe Asian eyes are more hooded um, and have more fat um, content than, than, than Hispanic eyes, but still, you still need to remember that essential core shadow that casts off the eye socket. So let's take one more before and after. Before, after. So I'm just working with what you gave me. I'm applying the male tropes that I know. I know it looks like a different guy. Um, I know what you might have been going for is that really, I know I've seen a guy that looks just like what you've been drawing. And it's really very cute. So maybe shrinking the eyes a little bit more, not as much as I did, um, you'll, you'll get something out of it. All right, so real quick, real quick, just to spare you, Ellen. I'm just gonna do this. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna give it something geometric, cause I, cause I gotta do it. I gotta before before it happens. It's probably already happening as we speak. Um, um, don't do it, guys. Wait for me. All right, something a little more geometric. <clears throat> Wait. It's just going to happen, Ellen. I had to do it. All right. <laughs> Peen. Don't do it. <laughs> don't do it. Shauna, don't do it. Um, have you seen female bodybuilders? Testosterone actually turns women into men. Uh, the fact that they lose their breasts in favor of pec definition doesn't help. Yes, Arpur, I've talked about this in my gender videos. Um, female transgender people uh, take testosterone for a year and they look nothing alike. Search it up, Arper. Uh, Google um, female transgender testosterone one year. <laughs> and you'll see the power of testosterone, what it actually does uh, to, to, to the female signifiers, female gender signifiers. All right. So what we have here is a mate suck my dick painting. <laughs> I'm sorry if I'm going to cut that out. And um, and what we need to do is, I need to make one thing very, very clear. That video that I gave, for a very specific reason, I created a very severe distinction between the levels of the atmosphere. The levels of the distance levels with shades, very, very specifically. And you did an amazing job, amazing job. I can see the, the slopes, I can see how everything connects. You did an amazing job on the grays. Um, however, please do not make it feel like it is this. And let me know if you guys know what I'm talking about with what I'm drawing next. <clears throat> what is what is this? It's not a middle finger. <laughs> okay, it's not a middle finger. And there's Rapunzel and there's her hair. Um, what is this that I'm doing right now? Pop-up book. Excellent. You do not want to make the levels of your atmosphere feel like a pop-up book. This happens when you, I know it's early, and I know it's not done. Believe me, I feel you. But it's, it's a matter of me reminding you that for every shape that ever existed, everyone repeat this back to me and say it back to me, for every shape you're ever going to draw, um, there is going to be a basic shape that sits underneath it. <clears throat> pa a book <laughs> pa a book <clears throat> if 
for every shape that exists, there's a basic shape underneath it. If you guys can summarize a mountain as having one basic geometric shape, which would it be? Let's take a look at these. Which of these would the mountain be? Would the mountain get? <clears throat> Triangle? What is another word for triangle? Conical? No. Oh my god, I can't believe you guys are getting this wrong. Triangle? No. Pyramid. Yes. Pyramid. Please don't say triangle. God, you think in kindergarten they'd have taught you early geometrics back then. I honestly want to change the school system for, <laughs> for America. Canada and America. Because I've, I've noticed that since I've been teaching people, I've noticed severe, severe symbols, symb symbols that affect the way they render three-dimensionally. You don't get introduced into the third dimension to like grade six. That sucks. Sucks for me because I have to like undo that. Um, you, that's really dangerous. You have to know exactly where your limitations are from the school system that raised you. You have to ask yourself, am I really thinking on the three-dimensional? Do I really think about pyramids? Like, when was the last time I really considered the geometric value of a pyramid? When was the last time I drew a pyramid? And then you go in and try to draw a mountain? Of course it's going to look like a pop-up book. Um, I know it's early, I know, but I'm trying to like, as if, if, as if this is a f finished version. Um, please remember that if you are confused about how to render a per uh, anything, especially a mountain, mountains can be really tricky, remember there is a pyramid that sits underneath it. Every mountain, search up any mountain right now, you will find a pyramid-like structure because the way mountains are formed is that you have one plate over another plate pushing and then finally forming it. You're going to have an edge somewhere where that those two plates separate it. It's natural that you have a pyramid-like shape. Of course they're not going to be perfect pyramids because the earth does not create uh, perfect geometry. It's organic, it creates randomized, um, uncontrolled geometry. But essentially if you're an artist and you're trying to figure out where the hell do I put the light, where the, where the hell do I put the shadow, sorry, break it down into, <laughs> I had a lot of chicken, break it down into um, into uh, into a pyramid and that way you will treat you don't have to depend on the photo that you bring in you can treat it as if it was a pyramid early on so you know which part of the photo to cut out place over this side of the pyramid and which part of the photo to cut out and make sure the grain is traveling across this because when we're talking pyramid we're talking about this grain this grid line and this grid line can someone tell me the importance of these grid lines what is important of these grid lines, what are they telling us that we don't have? I'm just gonna I'm gonna do an example for you here to hint the answer. <clears throat> what do grid lines give us? <sighs> Trap education. Never thought of it like that. Fantastic. Um, I don't think of it like that. I don't think of it like very soft rock will become a cone more due to erosion, but you have to break it down into the core shape because you want to get that delicate little edge that isn't there when you when you have a cone. You're drawing a cone, you're setting yourself up for failure. There's no such thing as cone. Not everything is, is, is Ice King's castle. It's not a cone. Volcanic mountain will be cone-like. There is a very severe little bit of shading that I need to see in order to, to to, to make sure that you guys are at least thinking on the three-dimensional level. So there is a pyramid that I want you guys to record today, not a cone. I know that there are massive amounts of varieties in the world, um, but we're not talking about that. We're talking about a very basic um, technique. Perspective and subdivided coordinates. No. Perspective. No. It's not perspective. It is a cause of perspective, but what is? what are those grains telling us? What are these telling us that when you bring in your photo, let's say you got a photo, this is a maté painting, you bring in your photo, you lay it over here, what do these do to help you when laying it over? I said it already, I just want you guys to catch it. I think it's easier to get a cone if you start with a pyramid. Symmetry? No. No, not symmetry. F. You get an F, Ellen. <laughs> you get an F for, 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 for effort. Geology is not so straightforward, um, is all. I know, but we're not talking geology. We're just talking about the basics of setting up your composition. Volume? No. 
form. Uh, yeah, it comes out of form. Everything does. Um, keep keep thinking deeper. I'm not going to help you guys. I really want you guys to figure this out. I, I said it too. <clears throat> what do these grid lines that are that are locatable in your in your photograph? These grid lines, these patterns, these delicate little lines. What do they do? Um, depth, form, damn, texture, depth. I really don't want to help you guys. I really, guys, I, I really want you guys to to get this. No, not depth. Height. <laughs> no. Steps to Egypt mummies. <laughs> yes. Yes, it's the steps to Egypt mummies. <laughs> Z-axis light and shadow. The display on the Z-axis. No. No. Sadist. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I am sadistic. I like see you guys suffer. Contour shape. Ooh, Lyle. Come on, go on, Lyle. Tell me more. What do you mean by contour shape? When you bring in two textures, you found two photos for your matte painting, right? And you need to lay them on this pyramid that you just constructed in your grayscale level. When you are painting, you are missing what? I gave you a clue, and I just gave you another clue. When you're painting, when you're rendering, you miss what? What's left that tells you that this is an actual pyramid that isn't completely painted in? You don't see the bottom of this pyramid. It's covered with trees or other rocks. What creates the distinction of either side? Can I get a vowel? <laughs> Let's see. Can I give you a vowel? Um, I, 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 no, I can't. Vanishing point. I forgot what your question is. Um, think 3D. Shape shows the shape of the object. Yes, Lyle. Can you elaborate on that a little bit? Can anyone take a hint from that and go go with it? This one was one. Is it a one-word answer? <laughs> Has perspective been mentioned? Yes. They indicate edges. Excellent. The edge shows the shape of the object. The contour shapes are dependent on this grain. So whenever you do matte paintings, the most the best piece of advice I can give you is it's easy to set up your grayscales, it's easy to tell, okay, this is background, this is middle ground, this is foreground. Um, it's easy to do that. The hard part is bringing the photos in and making it work. That's the real bitch. And you have to remember the pyramid, the sphere, the square, and every single thing you've prepared. Because matte painting can be done on the 3D level, where they have, they bring in real 3D um, meshes for, for landscapes, and they have to set up the photograph on that. It's easy because they have the z-axis, they have access to it. We don't! We don't have the z-axis. All we have is our imagination and the power of, of friendship. <laughs> um, you have to make sure that you don't forget about these grid lines. That the, that the grid lines, yes, they are dependent on perspective. Perspective was there, but it's the edge that needs to be preserved. So your mountain looks like a real mountain instead of a pop-up book. And that's, that's my biggest critique here. Um, I'm not going to talk about color or grain or texture. I'm not grain texture. I'm not going to talk about um, uh, design. I'm not going to be able to talk about architecture um, today for you. That's a lot. That's a buttload of scientific, um, technical stuff. I won't be able to cover it. But if I get, can give you one thing in this short amount of time we have, it's please do not make your landscapes look like pop-up books. Mine looked like a pop-up book because it wasn't done. Um, and this is the bit that I needed to add to that beautiful video of mine <laughs> that got all that heat lately. Um, when you do matte paintings, matte, please do not forget the fact that you need to work in 3D shapes on your grayscale level. Space and form, light, light, plain direction of uh, lines, plummet line, boo, light, as in um, Catherine fan art edge, uh, as I'm drawing Catherine fan art. Uh, bro, bronies will help us be artists. Power of friendship. <laughs> I see. I said edge like right at the beginning. When God's name. <laughs> really, I didn't see Yemdis. I'm sorry. Um, it's a lot of people talking. I'll try to finish it with that in mind. Yeah, Ellen, go back to it. Set up. You know, ask yourself, what is this mountain really doing? So, is this a cliff? You know, is this like a steep cliff? What happened 
on the geological level. Was there a landslide here? If there was a landslide, there should be a tiny little bump to greet it. Um, if this was a landslide, then it most likely this is like the inner workings of the rock. So the grain might look something like this, Ellen. And then the rest of the rock might look something like that. And then you've got the edge of this mountain. So what happens here? Maybe there is another grain. And the mountain looks like a big chunk got taken out of it because of a massive landslide that happened 500 years ago. Um, you you got to think like that because you got to make sense of the geology. Everything has a narrative, even the sensitive little choices you make about your landscapes. Um, once you figure out this basic mesh that 3D modelers use, you can overlay anything you want as long as you remember the mesh, as long as you remember that you can't just get a photo and smack it on. It'll look like a pop-up book. And that's what doesn't look good. You also want to show that this little bit rotates around, that there's another side. If there was someone standing here, they would see the side of the... Let's say they're holding a camera. Um, they would see the side of the mountain that we don't see. So this is a three-dimensional object. We can walk around and then we'd eventually disappear behind it. You want to make it feel like that. Now you have this beautiful atmospheric fade. You got that from the video. Excellent job. Good work. Um, do not forget the mesh lines. <clears throat> okay. Um, any questions at all? <sighs> I hear friendship is magic. <laughs> it's magic until you change the ponies colors to make them more inclusive a la Tumblr. Some people uh, say you should start with a grid for landscape paintings. That's a good idea, but you know, what do you throw the grid on? You gotta choose some basic shapes, you know? You gotta really see the end result in your mind and then make sure that you're always working toward that. It doesn't matter really the order as long as at some point, Arper, you're thinking about the third dimension and grid lines are amazing for revealing it. Um, no problem, Ellen. Good luck. I really would like to see what you do with it. You're one of the first people who's actually attempted one according to my video. I'd love to see where you go with it. So please don't be a stranger and come back with your finished piece. I'd love to take a look at it again. Um, is it pronounced mate? It's pronounced mat popularly, but I got this fucking heat lately about um, pronouncing it mate. I, I can do what I want. <laughs> I can do what I want. And I will say mate if I feel like saying mate. Don't abuse my form submission. By the way, um, you, I know you, you're out there. Whoever's been submitting, <laughs> someone who wants to commission a banana banana fudge sundae or something from me, I'm, I'm taking you on. You send me your personal information, I'll make you a banana fudge sundae. I promise you that. If you're in the New York area, I'll get you one or I'll make you one. <clears throat> Someone's been <laughs> sending me emails, like rec rec recursively, about um, banana, banana fudge sundaes. <laughs> They're like banana at, at split.com. Do you have a banana split? Something like that. It was hilarious. They really, they really like light up my day. People can be so funny. It's a honey badger. <laughs> honey badger don't give a shot. <clears throat> I will, and this was such an inspiration to keep working on it. Yeah, push yourself, and if it doesn't get finished, at least you tried, and that's something that not a lot of people can say that about landscapes. Landscape is one of those things everyone dreads and knows. It's like, a th like it's like, it's like, I'm sorry, I'm going to say it. It's like your mother's funeral. You know you're going to one day either die before your mother or have to go to your mother's funeral. Um, and that, <laughs> it's, not, it's not even funny, what the fuck's wrong with me? But that's what, <laughs> that's what landscape feels like to me. I was like, fuck, one day I'm going to have to deal with one of those, and I, and I don't want to, and it's scary, and it feel, makes me feel sad. But it's, it's, you're taking it on. Damn, I'm so morbid. Halloween's over, I have no more excuses. <clears throat> it's like aluminum, really, let's be honest. What's like aluminum? Feng Zhu is in love with landscapes. <clears throat> yeah, sometimes different people have like leaned towards something that they've done for a long time. And faces, it's weird for me to find people who, who don't do faces as much as I do. Um, and then for them, it's weird for them to find people who do, who don't, who do faces and um, not do landscapes. So it's, it's about how you really raised yourself as an artist and how you grew. Okay, bye guys. <laughs>